now that we've incorporated how to make use of caches, we will need to explore various mechanisms that we can utilize in order to make sure that we're making use of caches in the most efficient manner. And so there are a few ways in which we can do this. We can exploit the spatial locality of, of the data that we're using. So in this case, what we want to do is bring more mem more into memory, bring more data from memory into our caches at, at one time. And then we also want to work on better organization in which we can exploit uh, the working set concept associated with cache. So let's take a look at one way in which we can improve cache efficiency. And one way that we can do this is called cache blocking, in which what we want to do is exploit spatial locality. And so in this case, when we have a have data that needs to be retrieved from the cache, instead of just bringing in one word of data, we want to bring in blocks. And so in this case, what we've done is we've identified uh, four words that will be brought in. And so one block will contain four, four words of data, four bytes. So for any address that we pull, we're gonna pull the corresponding four, three successive blocks of data. So for example, if we're at address 0, 0, 0, we're going to pull in the four, 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 four bytes of data. If we were to call address 0, 0, 4, we would also pull in the next four bytes of data up to 0, 7, and so forth. And this is an idea of of exploiting spatial locality, given that for instructions, it's common that data that is needed for successive instructions are likely to be stored together within memory. And for the most part, this is going to be most beneficial in cases where you're not uh, branching. And the block size can vary. It can go from uh, four blocks uh, to 16 or um, or four, four words to 16 words or even changes such as two words could be brought in for our block. So with this in, my, in mind, let's interpret uh, the memory address and what is needed. So we will consider S is going to represent our size of the cache that we're bringing in. The value B is going to represent the block size that we plan to use. And as we stated before, B could vary. Uh, typical block sizes are going to represent uh, four words or 16 words. And so then we will also have L to be the lines in the cache as well. And so with this in, in mind, we have various other computations that we can compute. We have T to represent the cache tag. N is going to represent the cache index index and B is going to represent the block offset. So to compute B, we'll simply do the log of log base two of our block size. To compute L, the number of lines in the cache, it is going to be S divided by B. So we will be the size of the cache divided by the block size. N is going to be log two of L, the lines in the cache. And T is going to be what we have left over. So it'll be A minus B plus N. 
And so you want to consider with this in mind, L is going to represent uh, the number of lines in our direct map cache. So here, these are how T, N, and B are computed based off of what we do know about the cache. And the block offset is really just the word number within the block that we've chosen. So in our previous example, the word number would be represented as 0, 1, 2, or 3 for each of our blocks. So now let's take a look at our circuit for our multi-word uh, cache here. And so here we have our cache tag, cache index, and block offset that is stored in memory. And then we have it mapping to our cache where the cache index is going to go to our valid bit and to our tag. So with the when the cache tag and the tag from the cache is compared in our comparator, if it is a yes, we'll use our AND gate and we'll have a hit. And so in order to include multiple words from the cache, what we're going to want to do is use a multiplexer. And so in this case, we've represented how we can do our lookup, our read, and our write. And so with this in mind, we have the index for the cache lookup that's going to come from our memory. And then we have each of the entries that are contained within the cache. And you'll remember that our least significant uh, bit of the address is used to specify the specific word that we're going to be looking at. And we used a multiplexer to select the specific word from the block based off of B bits. And that is what is, that is, what is sent to the CPU. If we were to have a read, then this means that we're going to bring in an entire block from the cache index. And then we'll use our tag comparison to determine if we have a hit. And again, the multiplexer will select the block that we need, and it it's gets sent to the CPU. If we have a miss, then the CPU will initiate transferring our block from our memory. Upon a write, we'll make sure that we modify our write algorithm. So there is only one valid bit that is used for our entire cache line. So let's consider with the right miss with the, within a multiple word cache. There are some things that we have to consider. And so here we have the index and tag going to our cache. Uh, we have our data written to the cache by the CPU. But in, the, in this case, if there is a miss, we'll have to go to memory and retrieve a block of data. The data is then sent back to our cache and to the CPU. And so this could require that we incorporate some additional metadata for our dirty bits um, in order to ensure that we're able to make the appropriate uh, right operation. So as we observed, we first have the missing block is going to be copied from memory into the cache. And only then will we update the specific, specific word that needs to be utilized. And so let's take a look at uh, multiple word uh, 
cache address. And so within a direct mapped cache, we have our 32-bit byte addressable memory address. We then have each memory word that is going to contain four bytes of data. We have a block size is equal to four words. And so four words containing four bytes each gives us a total of 16 bytes for our block size. Then have an appropriate memory access that is used to bring in a block of data. We have a 64K byte cache, and we have a write back cache with a 30 bit per word. And so we have our block offset, we have our index, and we have our tag. So our block offset in this case is going to be log two of 16. So this is going to be four bits, zero to three. Our index is going to be log base two of 64K divided by 16. So that is going to give us 12 bits to represent our index. And so our tag will be everything else that is left over 32 minus 12 minus 4, which is going to give us 16 bits. So when we go to pull data from the cache, our block offset tells us what needs to be pulled. We utilize our index to identify the line in the cache that we need. And then we have the tag to identify which word that we need to utilize. And so in our tag deal, we have the values represented as 001 and 0021 in hexadecimal format. And so if we are to implement uh, a multi-word cache in our circuit, we're going to have appropriate components for our memory address. We have our comparator comparing our cache tag to our tag index, to our, our cache tag to our tag in the cache. If that is a hit, and it is valid, then we will, our AND gate will determine to send the data. The block offset use is also sent. And so the multiplexer determines which word is going to be sent to our CPU. And so using cache blocking, we're able to try to improve cache utilization, which will result in a lower miss rate. And so this is one of the benefits associated with spatial locality as the block size uh, increases, we would like for the miss rate to continue to decrease. But in reality, we're not going to get that to continue. Typically, we will reach a point in which the, the, the miss rate will decrease, but then start to increase again. And so it's important to figure out what is going to be the ideal, ideal block size to utilize. And in this case, it can be based off of a number of different factors to determine what is going to be the optimal block size. And this is going to be a, 
a trade-off that has to be analyzed based off of the type of application that you're using, as well as the hierarchy of the system that's being utilized as well. So there's always going to be a point where things will get worse. And so this can happen when the working set changes and larger blocks have to be fetched from memory. But memory can only transfer so fast. And so it can become a bottleneck. So one way that we can overcome this is to explore explore how to best utilize uh, working sets. So we have working set considerations that are within an application. So consider that the working sets of a program and how they are how they are laid out in memory. We want to identify some of the best ways to utilize the cache so that appropriate working sets will result in the most efficient use of the cache. Unfortunately, um, direct mapping can cause inefficient use of the cache with some overlapping working sets. And so this means that we won't get the best performance if the working sets are all mapping to the same cache location. So that will result in constant evicting of data and flushing of the cache. And so, because we'll have to constantly keep pulling data in for each different working set. And so one way that this can be overcome is to consider another approach to the way we utilize caches. And so we allow any mem memory block to be brought into any cache block. So this is similar to being able to bring in a virtual page into any av available physical page frame. And so we call this a uh, fully associative uh, cache mapping. And so our address interpretation with the fully associative cache will have our cache tag and we'll have our index. And so we don't need to have with our cache, we have our cache tag and we have our index, but this isn't needed for fully associative cache. All we really need now is just the cache tag. And so this makes things for our address a lot simpler, but in circuitry, let's consider what is, what is needed. We have our cache tag and our block offset and then we have our appropriate cache lines. And then we have to consider for each line in the cache what is going to be needed, what is going to be the complexity of the hardware. And so the hardware complexity that we have here, how many comparators are we going to need, and how big is each comparator? So if you consider this, we're going to need a bunch of comparators, essentially, for each line in our cache. But the benefit is that when you're searching for a value within the cache, all you need is the value. But of course, this is not the most efficient implementation that we can utilize. So we'll need to find an appropriate trade-off that we can make between using a fully associative cache and using direct mapping. In our next lesson, we will explore an appropriate trade-off that we can use in order to get um, 
better cache utilization, but with less hardware. 